you're communicating your research with others, think about the story behind the research. And stories are a really powerful way in which to share what you do and why you do it. Stories help create empathy. They help connect us with other people. So why not think about your research in the context of the beginning, the middle and the end and making that research come to life through a story. When you do the presentation, the important thing is to cut out the jargon. It's all about the so what, so what's in it for me? You need to relate it to their role, which means you need to have done your homework a little bit on what that role actually might be. I try to have little pop-up text boxes within each slide, usually it comes up at the end of the slide, which kind of just says, so this is what it means for you. Or I will have a pop-up box with a question and then we can engage and find out as we go along how this actually might be helpful to them. In that way, you're actually getting something out of it. It's, it's not a one-way process. It's all about knowledge exchange. It's not, for me, ever knowledge transfer. It's probably quite important to think, is there a way that you can actually get your uh, research out to a different audience? So it's very, very easy in a way to sort of sit there and, and the usual sort of people who are already interested in what you're doing will come, will come to you. Um, what you might want to do is identify a group of people that, that aren't thinking about coming to you, would never even th never consider doing that, uh, and find out how, how to get to them. One of the things we've done at Jodrell Bank in, in that regard, we, we have some music festivals that we do now. Uh, most years we, get, we basically get bands into play, so people come to watch the bands, big stage, 12,000 people, Elbow, New Order, all these sorts of bands. And along the side of the music, we actually have a science arena where we have researchers from all across the university who talk to um, the, the people who've come for the music about their science. And it's a really good sort of way of getting to people who might not just come for the science, but you also get, um, you you know, you have an enjoyable day, they learn something about the science and, and they enjoy the music. And I think if you can think of ways of getting to those different audiences, that, that's worth considering. You need to think about how to disseminate your research effectively and how to make it easily understood by people outside of the university. And that might mean, you know, summarising the headlines of your research, uh, getting it noticed, writing a blog. For instance, I've, I've produced blogs and they're much more widely read than academic journals or, or books and that can really help you to, to get your research out there, to get it noticed um, by, by stakeholders and then from that might spring other things like meeting people face to face or delivering an extended presentation to a grouping and face to face contact can be really effective in building up strong relationships with stakeholders. The museum offers a really unique um, opportunity to communicate things visually, I think. So if you have an interesting um, body of research, it may be fascinating to read about, but it can also be realised in three dimensions. And people come to the museum who might not know anything about that uh, subject area and they can learn lots and take uh, a lot away from it. We're also very keen on social media, so we have a really active uh, network of contacts. So research we've found that's presented uh, through the galleries uh, may one day uh, be on display in a case, but the next day uh, be all over Twitter. It's a really effective way to communicate key points uh, from academic research. I've pitched my research to lay audiences in situations such as Fame Lab, where you have to um, condense your research message into three minutes or less and you have a very broad audience. I've also obviously talked to pupils and explained what we do in the lab at that level but then also to the teachers at STEM conferences and then of course to a research audience who also want to know about the impact of research and the engagement process. So I think it's very important to think what the audience wants to get out of it, what could they take away from it, but it's also important to start with something that's very familiar to them in order to engage them in what you're saying to get their attention. So for instance, I work on gut worms and so sanitation is a very big issue in non-industrialised countries and so we know that a billion people don't have access to a toilet. So that's a clearly a key message for pupils because they're constantly being told to wash their hands and flush the toilet. From an older pupil point of view, we know that the eggs that are released into faeces are about the same width as a human hair. So we can use that either using microscopes or just visually to show the students that if they look at a human hair, that's how big an egg is. And so if you wash your hands, obviously, you can't always see the egg on your hands. So we can use that to explain the infection process, but use something very familiar to them in order to engage them at the beginning. One lesson I've learned in trying to obtain continued funding from the research councils is to keep them engaged with progress. 
to deliver good examples of how your work has delivered either academic value or the value to society and industry. So in pitching our research on ethnicity at the Centre on Dynamics of Ethnicity, one of the things that's been striking with our briefing series is how some briefings have been taken up by the national media, uh, even internationally, whereas other briefings of the same research quality um, have met with relatively little response. And so one of the things we've been working at through doing continual events is actually having the pitch develop over time. So if the research is of high enough quality, if it's of significance, then eventually these things do get taken up. And so I would be emphasising not to be worried about that first release of uh, a briefing or an event, but often some of these things can be slow burners and our work on social mobility, for example, has, has paid off several months down, down the line in terms of being presented uh, within national government and, and being taken up by policymakers. Thank you.